everyone. Uh, it's really great to uh, to be here and you know, thanks so much Jess and Claire for inviting me to present on uh, the work that we're doing uh, called the CFO Task Force, but I'll tell you a bit more about sustainable finance in general. Uh, this is really kind of a hot topic, uh, you know, sort of especially because of the um, global pandemic. I think we've seen a surge in uh, some of the um, financial products you know, that I'm going to talk about uh, recently. And the, the work that we're doing is not necessarily to get everyone to issue those, those, uh, those, those products, but really to think about providing a platform for, for companies. And some of you have mentioned uh, sustainable finance. Uh, to, to kind of think through and you know, sort of innovate and a, a bit like this group, but uh, at a global level with uh, with other companies uh, across sector and across geography. So, so that's uh, that's what I lead uh, for for the uh, the compact. And okay, here we go. So what I'm going to cover today is a little bit of an intro on the SDGs. So not too much because I'm uh, kind of mindful that. Quite a few people have already been working on it way too long. It feels. I mean, we. I, I agree. You know, ideally we would uh, we would have stopped working on the SDGs by now and everything would be sorted. But obviously, you know, we've still got a long way to go. And uh, what the task force is actually doing is trying to kind of you know create, mobilize CFOs and uh, sustainability uh, practitioners such as yourself around the financing of the SDGs. So I'll cover that. I'll also uh, touch upon our, our CFO principles, which we've issued uh, three months ago in September. And that gives us a common language really in terms of, you know, if I'm a CFO or I'm part of, uh, of the team, uh, how do I start addressing some, some of the, uh, how do I start aligning or even thinking about uh, aligning my investments with the SDGs? And then I'll touch on partnerships as well. Um, not, not exhaustive, but as part of the group, we have, uh, you know, sort of developed quite a few collaborations, uh, especially with A4S. So some of you might either be members or uh, know of it, uh, given that it's uh, UK based, but uh, not just uh, that group there, you know, there are also uh, others. So just wanted to touch on that. Cool. So introductions. Uh, so this is just setting up the scene. I think uh, you know it's really kind of clear that we have um, a, an annual investment gap of 2.5 trillion dollars, uh, you know, sort of to actually achieve the SDGs. So that's uh, a figure that kind of you know varies, uh, but it just gives you to give you a kind of you know the scale of what we're looking at here in terms of actually achieving the, the SDGs by 2030. So it's it's huge. Uh, it's not impossible, uh, especially if we can only start sort of leveraging the work that corporates and other companies can actually bring to the table. But equally, you know, it's a substantial enough to, uh, to create momentum. And there's a strong, uh, so there's a strong mandate from, from the UN to work on financing for the SDGs. So we really have a, a direct, you know, sort of mandate from, from the Secretary General to kind of look at this uh, from a UN Global Compact perspective and leverage and work with our members to, to achieve um, and to work towards that, that investment gap or financing gap. Great, sorry. So um, we've been working on this. So some of you might be familiar with this and apologies if you are already. Um, the last three to four years, so be before the task force was created, we've been working on issuing some guidance for companies specifically around corporate finance how you know, sort of, uh, that can help mainstreaming SDG investments, looking at also uh, guidance on specific financial instruments. So uh, we've looked at, um, we actually came up with the, the, the first, you know, the, we were the first to come up with the concept of an SDG bond. Uh, and at the time um, it was you know, sort of very innovative in the sense that uh, no one was actually really looking at that. The first uh, SDG linked bond, so perhaps just, you know, and I, I apologize if, if you're already aware of, of, of this, but the difference between uh, a linked bond and an actual green bond, for example, is that a green bond is focusing on a uh, on financing a particular project. You know? So um, whereas a linked bond is looking at uh, sort of attaching uh, capital raising on um, a whole strategy of the company. So so it's a slightly different sort of mechanism. Um, and obviously, you know, we're pushing towards the alignment of the whole business as opposed to just financing one project um, because you know, it's a great start uh, for companies to look at that but uh, but even better if they can actually align the whole strategy uh, with um, with the SDGs. So the, an example of that is NL. I, I don't know if uh, you're familiar with 
with them. I wasn't uh, before I started my job two years ago. They are a uh, large Italian, but also operating globally energy provider. And they've really shifted uh, their whole businesses from non-renewable into renewables. And that's you know, uh, one of the kind of bond that they issued in 2019, so last year. Um, and as a result, you know, we came up with the idea of you know, we should we should actually kind of get a group together of CFOs because this was very driven by the CFO at NL. Get a group together uh, and and try to multiply those those initiatives and and get more traction around this. So, so that's what I, I guess that's a bit of the the history uh, of uh, sustainable finance work at uh, the Compact. All of this is available online, you know, free for everyone to download. So feel free to to go and have a look uh, for sure. So what we've actually done, interestingly, uh, what we've seen, uh, as I was mentioned in my introduction of the last uh, even just few months, is a surge and a growth into sustainable corporate finance, uh, in particular, you know, sort of uh, sustainability linked bonds. So even though we introduced the concept a year ago, uh, and I don't know um, whether, you know, we uh, we see this as a result of uh, of the pandemic. I think probably yes, um, when we first started working on this a year ago. Um, there was a lot of, I think, question mark around whether that would be viable or not. But um, recently, you know, a lot of companies have, uh, have actually sort of uh, ridden this, this kind of you know, new trend, which is uh, sustainable corporate finance, looking at how they can actually align their investment with the SDGs. So some of those companies that are mentioned here, and is, there's no reason why we, we are specifically mentioning Orange more than someone else, but uh, that was just really to show the trends that uh, that we observe. Uh, Susano, for example, is a, a Brazilian company and uh, they manufacture paper. They've just issued one of the first um, so actual sustainability link bond as well in Brazil, and they're part of the task force. So we're trying to kind of you know, get that that momentum going. So. Uh, that's the reason why we created a task force. Uh, at the time in 2019 when it was launched, uh, it was actually face to face, which was lovely. <laughs> I do miss those days. Uh, hopefully they will be back soon. But uh, they were launched by this, this kind of group was launched uh, you know, with companies such as NL and a few others. So we only had like a, a few companies, but the whole uh, idea was the DSG. So uh, the Deputy Secretary General Amina Mohamed, who, who you can see here on the on the picture, really was driving this um, this conversation and pushing ahead and saying, you know, we need to have this is a call to action for businesses. We, we you know, in a year time, we want to be uh, many others at the table and, and continue pushing it. So, so that's that's what happened. Uh, so just to kind of give you a recap, this is not, by the way, uh, we've we've had since then. Uh, this was as of September 2020. Uh, but we've had a, at least another six or seven companies joining us uh, recently, so it's not exactly up to date. But just to give you a feel for who's at the table, uh, what sectors are represented and what geographies as well. Uh, so it's primarily uh, large companies that we've uh, targeted you know, to start with because they are not all of them, but you know, some of them are actually already leading in this space. So what we wanted to create is a core group of uh, companies that were or is leading and and you know kind of generate more sort of leadership, but of course we now um, we've now issued a set of principles and that's really open to uh, to everyone uh, as long as they're part of the compact. Of course, we also not just have the real economy um, uh, represented. We have not that uh, investors aren't real or banks aren't real at all, but just you know so to distinguish, I guess, between uh, you know so from the on the right side where you have your actual chief financial officers versus the left side where we have C-suites, uh, but not from uh, not, not CFOs. So for example, at Pimco, which is one of the uh, world's largest fixed income uh, investors, we have the CIO, so the chief investment officer uh, representing uh, Pimco at the table. Really important to have not just you know, sort of the corporates, but also uh, the investors, uh, kind of credit rating agencies. So we're growing uh, on the left side as well. And I'll touch on the partners in, uh, in a minute. Okay, so what are we doing? <laughs> uh, just to give you a feel, and I won't go too much in detail, but the, the, so the reason why it's called the task force is because we've set it up uh, with, with uh, a very action, clear, you know, sort of plan oriented uh, mandate for the next, well, now the next uh, year and a half. And what, uh, what we're, we're looking at is, um, sure, sorry, the, I'll, I will re-explain the, the difference between the link bond and, and uh, 
and the green bond in a second. Um, so really kind of action oriented. Uh, and you know, I think it's important that people not joining just another network, but that they know that uh, we're looking at you know, sort of key deliverables. So the first nine months of the task force has been focusing on uh, issuing a set of principles, which I'll come back to in a second. The next year uh, starting already is uh, to issue a set of blueprints. So how do we implement, how do we guide companies to implement those principles? So we've, uh, the companies that you've just seen, we've, we've um, sort of you know, grouped them into actual sector groups uh, and we're going to be you know, working on kind of guidance for, for other CFOs as well to join or at least to kind of implement those, um, that, that guidance. Uh, and then who knows you know, what will happen. We're, we're hoping that uh, to create an actual movement uh, of CFOs and, and corporate finance, sustainable corporate finance, and create an initiative you know, that comes out of this. But we'll, we'll see. Uh, it really needs to match uh, the actual, because this is really created by CFOs, for CFOs, to CFOs. So we're, we're the secretariat for, for this uh, work, and we'll see you know, what, what happens in the year time. But um, so we've got, uh, if you were going to join now, uh, without pitching too much, you would be um, joining us in the working groups from the sectoral perspective, and of course your CFOs will be part of the um, what we have as a, a board level, and sort of you know uh, meeting on a on a regular basis. So, so that's that's what we're doing uh, over the next two well year and a half now. Um, just to kind of flag that I've been doing quite a few of those events, the ones that uh, we we have today, you know, with other colleagues uh, of of Jess and Claire, and my colleagues in the, in the region. So we're working closely uh, with other other sort of countries as well. I think that's just important to flag, obviously, you know, not necessarily the events themselves, but just the fact that we are going truly global. So. Um, we don't want to just have the usual suspects at the table from Europe and uh, and uh, and uh, sorry America, which of course is brilliant, um, and we need to have that group of companies, but also uh, equally reaching out to companies uh, in the global south. So we have now companies who've joined us uh, from Singapore, from Malaysia, uh, from Africa as well, in South Africa. And we're going to kind of and Brazil, of course, I've mentioned, and we're going to keep growing in in that. So. For example, if your footprint is global and international from a supply chain perspective, that might be also interesting for you to be part of that. Okay, so that's enough with the CFO pitch. Hopefully you get the where we get to with the task force. I want to touch again on uh, the principles, where so uh, you know, the guidance that we've issued and um, the kind of common language, I guess, that we've developed, which really complements the 10 principles of the compact, the global compact. So it's not, competing or separate, you know, it's a subset of, um, it's four principles that are a subset of the, the principles that you've already signed up to as members of the compact. So just to kind of clarify that. And then the difference between a link bond and uh, and an actual green bond, if you like. The, so it's, it's the, the, just to kind of really simplify, but uh, we can go into more details is a green bond is uh, kind of raising capital for a particular project. So for example, uh, it could be uh, a wind farm or, uh, you know, sort of a hydro um, sort of, you know, power uh, sort of installation or, you know, so, so, or it could be a hospital sort of, but, it, but, but basically any projects that you need to just raise money on specifically or raise capital for, that would be just, you know, sort of link as a, as a, the money will be just, you know, sort of linked to that particular project, so not necessarily the whole company. So, for example, what we've observed, and that's where a lot of the greenwashing comes from sometimes, or at least the criticism around that, is that, you know, green bonds are obviously, you know, very much um, a one way to start companies on, on corporate finance and sustainable finance. But often we see companies con continuing completely operating business as usual. So 95% of their operations you know, might be actually not aligned with the SDGs. And the 5% that they're raising capital for through green bonds or uh, social bonds uh, are, but so there's a dichotomy or a, a, an actual, you know, sort of tension between the, the actual, you know, sort of rest of the business and that particular project. Whereas an SDG link bond or sustainability link bond, as, as uh, they're now called as well, is actually linking uh, the, the whole strategy of the company. So it's basically if the company wants to grow, and raise capital to grow, uh, not just on one project, but overall, uh, then you know it, it, it raises capital and the bond, 
when it does it. The bond that is attached to the performance of the company that rewards uh, investors in the longer term if the company actually performs around their SDG target. So, so it's linked to a, an SDG strategy target. I hope that makes sense. <laughs> Uh, it took me a while to get my head around it, but basically, you know, uh, uh, the way to sum it is like either project based or strategy based, and that's you know you could see the difference I think between between the two, and we could talk more about that. So that's just to kind of uh, highlight the uh, the website that we have. It's all there if you want to access the principles. Um, also, just to kind of um, you know we're, we're we're pleased with this because the Wall Street Journal picked up on the work that we're doing with the task force. I, and again, it's not just to kind of brag about it, but just to kind of show that uh, there's a real bridging between the sustainability space and finance more and more. In fact, I was speaking to uh, L'Oreal yesterday, I don't know if it's yet official, but they are creating a sustainable finance function within L'Oreal itself. So, you know, we see that more and more. I'm conscious that not every uh, company has necessarily the resources to do that, but that's just to show that I think sustainability and finance are definitely emerging and, uh, you know, sort of publications like the Wall Street Journal are definitely, uh, you know, sort of more and more interesting, in, interested, sorry, into mainstreaming that, that work of sustainability within the pure mainstream um, finance space and world. So that's, uh, that's great. That's where we want to go. So the principles downloadable on our website. Uh, so, Apologies for the small print here, but um, this is the first deliverable, if you like, of the task force. That's what we've been working on for the last nine months. So we, we were busy with uh, when everyone was in lockdown, which was kind of a good time almost you know, to uh, to really kind of get CFOs to to spend some of their time on, on this. So it was good to, to have that um, un unexpected time together. Um, and so, as I said, a set of four principles. I'll come back to that in a second. but. Um, I think what they do is just really kind of guiding CFOs and their team in terms of where do I start, you know, um, how, how do I kind of start applying an SDG lens to, to the business. And so we've kind of captured that under a forward, which I think is quite well written, but, um, you know, financing our future. So really looking at not, not just uh, uh, what you can do right now, but uh, being able to future proof your, your business over time as well. The one thing I want to mention, and this is not mandatory at all, but um, if you are signing up to the principles or, or joining the task force, uh, we encourage CFOs to also set up targets. So as I mentioned, uh, you know, for NL, uh, the bond was linked or is linked to an SDG strategy target for the whole of the business, which is moving uh, the energy production that they have from I think currently at 48% uh, percent into 57% percent, you know, over the next five years. So this is this is what they're, they're looking at. And it's not that simple for every sector, I understand, but you know, for, for them it's pretty straightforward. And so we, we also encourage um, targeting and sorry, uh, setting up actual ambition targets. Uh, so th those are the principles. There's a lot of text here, so I'm just going to focus on the four bolded ones and then uh, we, I'm very happy to take a few more questions afterwards. So it, it's 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 the implementation of it, or just the, the you know the thinking behind it is that we sat down, as I said, with all those CFOs, and you know, everyone was like, oh yeah, this is what I mean by sustainable finance. And they all had different views, uh, and so ends the idea of having a set of principles to kind of um, create a common language. You know what we actually mean by uh, integrating SDG investment and finance. So the first two is what I've touched on already when I was you know, talking about the the SDG bond linked bond. Uh, so it's basically around impact disease measurement, uh, I'm sure things that you already do, but identifying positive and negative impact, uh, linking it to an SDG uh, indicator, goals and targets, if, if that's possible, or it could be several SDGs as well. Uh, you know, so sort of thinking about the decision making processes based on the SDG impact, so the funding, the investment needed to do that and so on. So the first two uh, are grouped actually to one one. So we then have working groups for each of those principles. So the, we've grouped the first two um, under strategy kind of, I think it's, it speaks for itself. Number three uh, is around corporate SDG finance. So that is uh, specifically linked to uh, uh, SDG linked finance. So financial instruments, so the bonds, but not just the bonds. It could be any, basically any financial instruments that CFOs have access to and applying an SDG link lens to it. It's not always possible, but it's just, you know, sort of thinking about what can, what, what can this be done, you know, in a, in a, in a different way. 
and de-risking actual corporate investments a lot of the time. And then the fourth point, which I think is essential, uh, just watching the time, is around uh, to make sure we got some question times as well, communication and reporting. So, you know, once I've done all of this, um, how do I report back to investors, create that narrative that resonates with investors? Because what we've seen, and that's why we have companies like Inco and others at the table, uh, and PRI, who we work with as well closely, is, uh, is a real sort of obviously push from investors. And what we want to say is, you know, for the CFOs to have that proactive role to actually be in control of the narrative to, uh, to, to investors and not just investors pushing them to, uh, to, to report on, uh, on, on those issues. So, so those are kind of the four, the four um, principles that uh, we've worked on and that are, uh, are the basics, if you like, of, of our work and guidance. And then I'm just going to briefly uh, add to, to this and then I think I'll, I'll close. But um, so I've just mentioned PRI uh, again, you know, hopefully some of you are aware of them. But if not, they are a sister organization of the UN Global Compact. Um, they are you know, sort of based, also based in London, but uh, it's basically a group of investors, so very similar to the Compact, but uh, I think they have more than 2000 members now uh, looking at, you know, sort of pushing investors to, to, to think about uh, responsible investment. So that's obviously a group that's very prevalent in our work. Uh, likewise with UNEPFI, so I think Jennifer, you mentioned uh, that you're a signatory to the principles for responsible banking. Uh, so that's led by UNEPFI for those who don't know who what they do. They mostly work kind of similar sister organization as well, but more, mostly not just, but with banks and uh, insurance companies. So, and they've been uh, issuing exactly, as you said, a uh, recently, I think last year, um, also in September 2019, a set of principles likewise on uh, for, for responsible banking. So in effect, you know, what we have is three different sets of principles that talk to each other. Uh, because I think principle five of uh, of responsible banking of UNFI, you know, is looking at uh, how from a, from a banking perspective, how do you manage your your corporate uh, clients? And of course, you know, that's that's then what we do working with the corporate clients. Um, and a few other you know stuff that you might have heard of as well. So I've, I mentioned the FRS players. Uh, we work closely with those guys. Um, obviously, European Commission as well. You know, that's a, that's a big one for us. So. Uh, we have direct access to um, to the team at Sustainable, uh, who leads on Sustainable Finance. So the CFO task force for the first time in July was able to actually participate uh, into the Sustainable Finance Strategy consultation led by the European Commission. So we, for the first time as a group, we actually submitted our our, our thoughts, which was quite exciting. Uh, so we do represent, you know, sort of obviously businesses at the table as well. And, and then many others, I won't go into details, uh, but uh, and obviously this is growing, you know, as, as we, we don't want to work with, we can't work with everyone, but we definitely want to make sure we don't overlap or, or replicate what's been done elsewhere. So I think that's probably it for me. Uh, that's my team. So uh, there's you know, not many of us, but enough. Uh, it's a great team and, uh, you know, based throughout the world, uh, you know, so if you need anything, come to me or any of those guys. And uh, thanks for your time. I'd love to take some questions.